Heaven on Earth, Upgrading the Purpose of Worship. Welcome, dear friends, to a journey that promises to enrich our spiritual lives and deepen our understanding of worship. Today, we embark on a series titled Heaven on Earth, where we will explore profound truths about the Church, its role, and the significance of our existence within it. Have you ever paused to wonder why we gather as a church community? Is it merely a tradition or something far more profound? Together, we will explore these intriguing questions, seeking answers rooted in the wisdom of Scripture over the next three weeks. Let's commence with an analogy that will help us grasp this concept more vividly. Think about embassies worldwide, for instance, let's consider a British embassy. It's not just a structure adorned with a flag, instead, envision it as a fragment of Britain nestled in a foreign land. Its primary mission isn't to serve the interests of the host country but to represent Great Britain itself. Likewise, the Church is designed to be a glimpse of heaven in a foreign world, a taste of heaven on earth. It doesn't exist to serve the world's interests but to uphold the heavenly kingdom of God. The rules governing the Church aren't necessarily the same as those outside because the Church operates under the jurisdiction of heaven. The Apostle Paul, who penned a significant portion of the New Testament, eloquently elucidated this concept in his letters to various local churches. In Ephesians 2 verse 19, he described believers as no longer foreigners but citizens of God's household. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20, he referred to them as Christ's ambassadors, carrying the responsibility of representing God's kingdom in this world. Jesus himself established the church to function as heaven's embassy on earth, bringing the divine into this foreign land. However, there are times when the church falls short of effectively representing its heavenly home. It may unintentionally resemble the world more than the kingdom it should embody, prioritizing worldly interests over God's and applying secular rules instead of God's principles. When such a discrepancy arises, God's embassy on earth fails to bring the fullness of heaven's influence to bear on earth. Therefore, in the weeks ahead, our mission is to clarify our identity as a local church, understand our core purpose, and distinguish ourselves prominently from the world around us. Our goal is to become an effective embassy on earth, making the world one unified Jesus nation. Today, our spotlight shines on worship, an essential aspect of the church's existence. Worship is one of the top three purposes of the church, entailing our collective gatherings to honor and glorify God. From the pages of the Old Testament to the New, we find that God's people consistently gathered to worship Him as a community. The church continues this sacred tradition, convening weekly, often on the first day of the week, to unite in worshiping God. You might wonder, can I worship God in the solitude of my own heart? Absolutely, personal worship is both encouraged and vital. In truth, everything we do should ultimately bring glory to God. However, throughout the Bible, we encounter the significance of God's people assembling for corporate worship. In Hebrews 12, we find a passage that sheds light on worship. It tells us that our worship should be characterized by reverence and awe. Our understanding of God within the church should differ significantly from the world's perception of Him. Too often, the world portrays God as a self-esteem coach or personal assistant, but the church must recognize Him as the majestic, all-powerful Creator and loving Judge. So, here's a couple of questions for introspection. 1. How does your worship, within the context of your unique audience, communicate a profound sense of reverence and awe for God to the world around you? 2. Does your worship serve as a source of inspiration, instilling reverence and awe for God in the lives of your children, co-workers, teammates, and fellow community members? Let's embark on this transformative journey together, seeking to fulfill our divine purpose as a church and radiate the essence of heaven on earth. Our corporate worship should always mirror the grandeur of God Himself, for it is in truly revering Him that our worship becomes the one thing we cannot afford to miss. Now, consider this profound question, when we gather for worship among God's people, whose joy and delight hold the highest priority in your heart? Whose worship becomes your primary focus? In our contemporary world, we often witness churches treating their services like entertainment events. Some approach church with the mindset of enjoying a show. As a believer, my heartfelt prayer is that every soul who stands to worship in truth and spirit should encounter God in a way that transforms their lives. Yet, 
Here's the crucial point I wish to underscore, the driving force behind our worship should not primarily be our personal enjoyment. Instead, it should be about honoring and pleasing God. So, let's confront a vital question, when you assemble for worship, whose joy takes precedence in your heart? Do you prioritize God's delight over your own? Our question shouldn't center on, what did I gain from worship this morning, but rather, what did God receive from our worship today? Worship isn't primarily for our benefit, it's entirely about God. It hinges on whether He found pleasure in our genuine expressions of love during our time of worship or if our minds were adrift. It rests on whether He was pleased with how we invested our time, talents, and resources to magnify His name, or if we were complacent or self-centered. Was God content with our response to His word, or were we merely thinking that someone else might have needed it more? Remember, the essence of worship revolves around God, not us. Our worship should revolve around Him because He is wholly deserving of our reverence, our awe, and our heartfelt adoration. Now, let's revisit Hebrews 12 verse 28 for a moment, we worship the eternal and unshakable. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. Understand this, my friends, worship isn't a mere church term or something confined to Sunday mornings. Every human being worships something because worship is woven into the very fabric of our existence. We were intentionally designed to worship. Consider this, there's something in your life that you hold so dear it would be the last thing you part with. There's something you're wholeheartedly eager to invest your time, talents, and financial resources in. In our world, worship isn't a rare commodity, it's everywhere. The challenge, however, is that often our worship is misdirected. When our worship is aimed at anything or anyone other than God, we inadvertently create chaos in our lives. Everything else in this world is akin to shifting sand, unstable, fleeting, and unreliable. In fact, he who plows does not look left and right but straight in a fixed gauge. Jesus said, in Luke 9 verse 62, No one, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. That's the message, let us remember that our worship should be solely directed towards the one who is unwavering and eternal, our almighty God. Everything, apart from God, resembles that wandering cow, unsteady and uncertain. Now, returning to the wisdom of Hebrews 12 verse 28, we find a poignant reminder that our worship should be infused with genuine gratitude. It reads, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. In a world frequently marked by a sense of entitlement, where individuals often believe they are owed certain privileges, it's crucial to grasp that entitlement stands in stark contrast to gratitude. Authentic thankfulness cannot coexist with entitlement. As followers of Christ, our perspective should be markedly different. We should echo sentiments akin to this, God, regardless of whether you perform another miracle in my life, what you've already done is more than sufficient. The sacrifice of sending Jesus to die for me is reason enough for me to surrender my entire being to your divine purposes. I lay down my life in service to you. Our Heavenly Father, God, has made an unimaginable sacrifice for each of us. He sacrificed His own Son, Jesus, in the hope of winning our love and offering us eternal life. Now, as we explore the depths of worship, let us remember that when the church gathers for worship, we stand out as a stark contrast to the world around us. Our worship is characterized by reverence, awe, and profound gratitude. So, I leave you with this compelling question, how have you responded to God's invitation? Are you someone who has never said yes to God's offer to know Him personally? to enter into an eternal relationship with the one who loves you unconditionally? The remarkable truth of the gospel is that this invitation extends to everyone, and yes, it includes you. I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for joining us in this video on He's His Good News channel. If you found this message meaningful, please click the like button below and consider leaving us a comment. To stay updated with more inspiring content, click subscribe and turn on your notifications. We truly appreciate your presence here. God bless you.